Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Summer 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about all things pigs. And boy oh boy, are these little guys cute. Now this is going to conclude our video with respect to animals in Farming Simulator 25. We have videos covering water buffalo, cows, sheep, goats, chickens, horses, and now pigs. As we have talked with respect to the other videos, let's talk about where we're going to be able to buy our pigs. And then we'll talk about where we're going to keep our pigs. What do we need to feed our pigs and how are we going to keep them healthy? And then ultimately, what are we going to be able to do with their output? And in this case, well, pigs are basically used for one of two different things. Pigs are excellent manure and slurry producers, but they also basically produce bacon. They are bacon makers at their heart. That's right. Their main output is going to be reproduction. But before we get into that, where do we pick these guys up to start out with? As with other animals in Farming Simulator 25, we can come down here to the animal dealer and pick up ourselves a load of pigs. We can talk to Kate and learn all about how we're going to be able to care for our animals. But I think we're pretty much good to go at this point. After all, you're watching this video. Now you're going to need an animal trailer similar to this Flegel TTW140 in order to transport your pigs. You're going to find that here in the vehicle shop. We're going to scroll down to the animals section. And once we get to the animals section, we have animal transport. And here we have the NOAA TTW140. It's going to be able to transport 13 pigs at a time. Or we could go with the Wilson Silver Star trailer. It's going to be able to transport up to 36 pigs at a time. If we do use the Wilson, though, we will need to use a semi-trailer with fifth wheel or a fifth wheel dolly if we're going to be using a tractor. Once we are positioned into the trigger, where well, we're going to activate that from either the tractor or from the ground. And from here, we're going to have two options. We can load onto the trailer or we can unload off of the trailer. Of course, we don't have any animals on the trailer now, so we'll, that choice really isn't an option. We're going to toggle over to our second choice, which is pigs. And we have three different breeds of pigs. The only real difference here is visual. We have German land race pigs. We have... Bethlehem Black Pied, and then we have Berkshire. All of these pigs, they can be purchased either as newborns, zero months old, or three months old. They're going to be $200 for zero month old pigs. And if we buy them here at the dealer, there is no transport fee. In addition, we can buy three month old pigs for $525. And again, if we buy them down here at the dealer, there is no transport fee. Now, pigs, they have a puberty age of six months and a gestation period of four months. What that means is our oldest pigs here, in three months, they will reach maturity and they will start their reproductive cycle, if you will. And then four months after that, they're going to offshoot on a one-to-one -one ratio. So you're gonna get one pig, piglet, if you will, for every adult pig that has reached 100% reproductive cycle. And then basically every four months at that point, your adult pigs are gonna reproduce. And again, then your newborn pigs are going to age up to 10 months. And once they reach 10 months of age, they're gonna start reproducing. So you can see in a fairly short order of time, you're going to be, well, up to your neck in little piggly wigglies, right? So once you load them into the trailer, right, at this point you could transport them to the farm and unload them at any of the animal pins. Or once you are ready to start offloading some of those pigs because of their reproductiveness, well, you can bring them to the trailer back down here to the animal dealer and you can offload them back into the animal dealer basically selling your excess pigs just like that. And again, in order to sell your pigs, you're gonna to need to pick the bottom arrow, basically the arrow pointing out versus the arrow pointing in, which is loading onto the trailer. Over here at the farm, let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to keep our pigs or basically what we're gonna keep our pigs in. 
We're gonna go to the build menu, which is gonna be Shift P on PC with a keyboard. If you're using a console or you are using a controller on PC, I do not know the key combinations for those. I am very sorry. Once we are in our build mode, we're gonna come down here to our little animal screen and we're gonna to toggle over to pigs. And at that point, we have the choice of an open pig pen for $20,000. And that's gonna be able to store 36 pigs. We have then a pig sty. Now this one is gonna be 100% interior. We cannot expand this one in any way. And it is gonna be able to keep 50 pigs and it's gonna cost $67,000. I want to circle back to the open pig pen since it is a fence. If we place this, we will get the option if we want to customize it. We'll talk about that here in a little bit, but we do have the ability to customize all of these pens except for this one right here. This one does not have the ability to customize because there is no outside portion. All the pigs are inside at all points in time. We have a shed with pig pasture. So the four doors you see, those are storage for vehicles and implements. And then the part over here to the left, that is gonna be for your pigs and your pigs alone. This is gonna be $44,000 for this dual purpose building. And you're gonna be able to store 25 pigs by default. We have then one of our base scheme pig pens from FS22 that has come over to FS25. This one, you're gonna be able to store 109 pigs in it in its default configuration. And then lastly, we have the large pig sty again from FS22, and we're gonna be able to store 275 pigs within it. And we also do have the dynamic pastures feature with our pigs, which means when we place one of these pins down, other than the one shed that I mentioned earlier, we're gonna get an option, do you want to customize the fence? Well, yes, I do. And at this point, we are gonna be able to draw our fence out. And well, have a massive pig pen if we want. And when we come back here to our shed, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it snaps. And as long as it snaps into place, then we are good to go. If it for whatever reason does not snap, then you need to remove the last segment and try to approach this area from a different angle. Once we do that, it's going to say, do you want to plant meadow for your pigsty? Now, this is a little misleading because we say yes. Oh, we don't get grass. We just get animal mud. So, yeah. Hmm. Wish the language maybe was a little bit more clear on that. But we do have the ability now to customize that. And since we've made such a large pig pen, well, we should have a pretty large storage capacity as well. Come over here to our delivery point and we're going to be able to support 341 pigs now in this large animal pen with respect to delivery to this animal pen or any of our animal pens we can buy animals here directly and if we do so we're going to have a 40 dollars fee for our three month old pigs and we're going to have a 30 dollars fee for our newborn pigs Three months, that's the oldest we can buy our pigs. So we do not have the option to basically buy adult pigs or pigs that are gonna to start to reproduce right away. We will have to buy three month old pigs and then wait three months before they will start their reproductive cycles. Now with respect to this pen here, we will need to provide water to this pen. And in order to water our animals, we will need a water trailer. We're gonna find that under vehicles, once again, under the animals category, and then barrels. There are four options for watering our animals. We have the ABI 550. In this video, we're gonna be using the ABI 1600 or the Lizard MKS-8 or MKS-32. Now the MKS-8 and 32 are also gonna be able to transport liquid fertilizer and herbicide as well, as well as goat and cow milk. Let's grab our tractor and just demonstrate watering that pin. Now that's the only pin that we need to provide water to 
all of the other buildings, we're just going to say has water piped into it from the city or from a well source. And therefore, we don't have to worry about providing water at all. As we provide water, you can see our water plane is rising. So that is good to see. And once we provided water, well, we're just going to drive off. Now, with respect to feeding our pigs, well, our pigs are going to have some of the most complex feeding requirements available. Let's go ahead and take a look here in our animal screen, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Pigs are going to require a base food. The base food is going to be basically corn. Then they're going to require a grain. The grain can be wheat or barley. Then they're going to require a protein. Protein can be either canola, sunflowers, or soybeans. And then for 5% of their food effectiveness, they are going to require root crops. Those root crops are going to be potatoes or sugar beets. That's pretty much it. It's a lot, but it's pretty much it. Or you can just hit that easy button. And if you hit the easy button, then you can just buy pre-mixed pig food in either big bag pallet format or big bag format. If we once again go to our vehicle shop and go to our animals category and go over here to our food category, we have for $1,000, we can buy 1,000 liters of pig food in pallet format or big bag format. So in essence, $1 a liter. And in order to feed these, well, you're going to need some sort of front loader. I've got the Schaefer self-propelled front loader here, but you could also make use of a telehandler, skid steer, or front loader arms for your tractor. We're going to find all of that here under the loaders category of the vehicle shop. Here we have the Schaefer 23E, and then we have the Kubota R640. We have front loader arms for our tractor, if we have that. And then we have our front loader tools. And specifically, we're going to need either the pallet fork for our pig food pallets, or we're going to need the big bag lifter single for our big bag. Let's go ahead and pull up here to our big bag with our big bag lifter. And when we present the big bag lifter to our big bag, we're going to get option to Q to connect. And I really like the animations on these big bags because they kind of wobble around and flop. And we're going to come over here to our food trough. And there we go. We've just fed a thousand liters of pig food into our food trough. And then for our pig food, well, like I said, we're going to need a pallet fork. And once again, we're going to lift this up, bring it over here to our food trough. And it's going to unload into our food trough, just like that. And now if we come back here to our animal screen, if we toggle over to our outdoor pigsty, here we go. We can see we have satisfied our water condition. We also have started to satisfy our food. We have our total capacity. We have our base food, our grain, our protein, and our root crops. Now, that doesn't look like it's moved very far, but we do have food here listed. Now, I am currently recording this on version 1.3 of the game, and we have what I believe is an errant food item here. I don't think this is supposed to be here because pig food... What's so magic about pig food is the fact that it will store or it will satisfy basically all of the pig's food needs in all the proper ratios because it is pre-mixed pig food. You can, of course, feed individually, and I will demonstrate that here in a little bit. But like I said, we have our pig food, and if we feed this pig food to our animals, it's going to satisfy all of the pig food requirements to exactly the right ratios that the pig foods or that the pigs are going to need.
let's go ahead and dump our trailer of pig food in here. And as you can see, as our total capacity is filling up, then our pig food is going up as well as our other columns, all at the appropriate percentages. So if this goes all the way full, then our pig food base will be at 50%. Our grain would be at a quarter. Protein would be around 20%. And then our root crops would be at 5% of this total bar graph. Now, if this is your first time watching any of the videos that I've talked about with respect to animals, then it's important to understand that animals with multiple food requirements like our pigs, if you should decide you wish to feed individual food items, like you want to feed corn, you want to feed barley, you want to feed soybeans, and you want to feed sugar beets, you can do that. But be very, very careful not to overfill any one of these food columns which would cause your total capacity to just go through the roof and max out. Because if you max out the total capacity, you will not be able to add any other food of any other source, regardless of how much or how little is in there, until the pigs have fed down the total capacity. I'm not a giant fan of this system. This system was incorporated back in FS22, and I was pretty vocal that I didn't think that was the right way of doing things because the player could accidentally overfeed their animals, which would then have an adverse effect on their overall health for sometimes a significant period of time, depending on how many animals they had in the pen at any one point in time. So when you are loading here, just remember to be very, very careful and not overload any one food source so for example we're putting 5,000 liters worth of corn in this particular building and you can see that our total capacity is going up and our base food has gone up but nothing else has gone up as a result now let's come over here and grab the next food source which i believe is wheat and again, we have 5,000 liters worth of wheat. And once again, we're gonna feed this into this building. And if we watch then our animal food indicator, our total capacity will go up, our grain will go up, but our base food will not. There we go. We now have 5,000 liters of each. And I believe the next one we're going to do is going to be sunflower seeds. Now I have to say the textures on these fill types really look good in FS25. So as we saw earlier, our protein is now going to go up because canola, sunflowers, or soybeans is a protein. And our total capacity is going up. Now, these percentages, let me explain this. Base food is 50% of your overall requirement for your pigs. If you only feed your base food, then your health is going to suffer a little bit. If you feed base food and grain, you're satisfying 75% of your animal food requirements, your health is going to go up. If you satisfy base food, grain, and protein, that's 95% of the overall needs of your animals. Your health should be maxed out at that point or pretty darn close because you know what? Root crops can be a pretty much a big pain in the butt to do. And I think you'll see that when we get around to our video on how to do sugar beets or potatoes. But one of the advantages of this is that, well, these pigs, they don't require much in the way of sugar beets or potatoes, being only 5% of their food requirement. 
just a couple thousand liters of either is going to go a very, very long way. So even though we've added 5,000 liters worth of each, as our pigs grow and consume our food, they're not going to be consuming all of this evenly. 50% of the total food that they consume is going to be base. 25% of the total food they consume is going to be grain. 20% of the total food they're going to consume is protein. And 5% of the total food they're going to consume is root crops. So these are really, really amazing pigs because they pick through their food and make sure they only eat the right percentages of each type of food. It's amazing, right? And the reason they do this is because over here, with respect to our pig pasture, when we fed our pig food, right? They will eat all of these to the proper percentages so that all of these go to zero at the same point in time. So it's really, really neat. Now, pigs are parallel eaters, which means they eat from all four food sources at the same time. Other animals in Farm Sim 25 are not necessarily parallel eaters. They will eat just one type of food at a time, but not pigs. Pigs are, well, they're pigs, and therefore they're gonna eat all the food available at all the time, but they are at least intelligent enough to eat just the right percentages of those food sources. Now, a disadvantage of selecting this open pig pasture is that this open pig pasture does not produce slurry, nor does it produce manure because you can't put straw in this particular pig pasture. So that might be one reason why you wouldn't go with that one. All of these other buildings, well, they will collect slurry and you will find the little stink water icon there. So like, for example, there we have our slurry. There we have our slurry and our other building. Right there we have our slurry output. So all the buildings will collect slurry. The open pasture will not. If you wanna do manure, you're gonna to have to put down a manure heap in order to do that, you're going to come over here to the build menu. You're going to come to silo extensions. You're going to find the manure heap. And this is going to need to be placed within a particular range of your animal pen. If you're too far away, it's basically going to say, hey, um, you need to be closer to a barn. So as we move closer to a barn, then we are going to basically get our price. And once we get our price, we can just plop this thing down just like that. In order to get manure, well, you're going to have to have straw. So in order to get straw, well, we can do it one of two different ways. We can provide straw in loose format using a forage wagon or a trailer, or we could provide straw in bale format. And in order to provide straw in bale format, well, you're going to need a bale spike and a front loader again, or you could use a straw blower like this cool Ravage machine. We're gonna find this here under our vehicle shop, under straw blowers, subcategory of animals. And here we have two base game straw blowers, the Primor 15070M and the Elmer's Ravage. Now, I like to demonstrate the Ravage because I think it's a really neat piece of machinery. So the way this works is we can unfold by hitting X and then some forks come down we're going to back this thing up to our bale and we can move our forks up and down with our mouse. And if I could back up right today. We're basically going to load this onto our forks and just tip it in. Just like that. Then we're going to hit X to fold that back up. And now that it is loaded, we're gonna come over here to our shed. Interesting enough, this shed here is the only shed that does not accept bales. So this shed only will accept loose straw. The other sheds, so the one back there, the large one that we placed in our white shed and pig pen it will accept both loose and bales this one right here it will only accept loose so as we add 
straw to this. We can see our straw indicator going up. And in theory, since we have fed these guys, then they will start producing manure once we go and sleep through the night. You see the straw plane raising up there. And there we go. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Let's fast forward to tomorrow and see where things lie. So you can see here we have a little bit of manure. Not a whole lot, but we've had a little bit of manure because we only have a few animals that are actually producing manure. We have a little bit of slurry as well. And let's go ahead and take a look here at our animal food screen. You can see that, remember, we had 5,000 liters of each. Over one night, we have 10 four-month-old pigs and 10 one-month-old pigs now. So 20 little pigs. They've consumed down to 4,821 liters worth of corn. They've consumed down 4,910 liters worth of wheat. 4,928, 4 sorry liters of sunflowers and 4,982 liters worth of potatoes. So you can see here the percentages that they are eating down is indeed corresponding to the 50, 25, 20, and 5%. You see our straw is going down as our manure goes up and we do have 652 liters worth of slurry. Now, what do we do with our manure and slurry? Well, we could take it down to the BGA and run it through the biogas plant and get some energy, get some methane, and get some digestate out of it. It's actually a quite an interesting idea. If we own the biogas plant, we can take manure and slurry and run it through the BGA. We get electric charge. That's going to give us money. We can get methane. That's going to give us money. And we're going to get digestate. And we're going to get a little bit less digestate. Is that maybe 20%, maybe 20% less manure in the form of digestate and 20% less slurry in the form of digestate that we dump over here. But we can take our digestate and then use that on our fields for fertilization. Or, well, if we don't own the biogas plant, we can just take our manure, manure and slurry and put them on our fields ourselves. And to do that, you would need something like this slurry applicator and a manure spreader. We're going to find those once again here under the vehicle shop under yield improvement. So we have our manure spreaders. We have several different options. Obviously, the bigger you go, the more capacity they will hold, the more horsepower they will require, and the more costly they are. In this video, we have the TA12050 Power Spread Plus manure spreader. Or you can get a slurry tanker, and this is what we're going to use to spread our slurry or digestate. Okay, so if we do take our manure or slurry to the BGA, we'll get digestate. We can use these to spread digestate on our fields, and it will provide a level of fertilization, which is better. They're all the same. So if you fertilize with digestate, slurry, manure, solid fertilizer, or liquid fertilizer, it's all the same with respect to at least the base game. We have a Super Cease 800. So this is what we're gonna use. And it's gonna basically come out of this nozzle and be sprayed all over the place. Stinky brown goo. Or we could go with a larger tanker like this Flegel, and it has an applicator already added to it. I'm gonna call this a drip line because it's going to basically drip or pour the slurry onto the field. And then we could buy one of these tanks like this. And this tank is simply a tank. It is going to require an attachment. So if we go to combinations, we can see the types of attachments that will work with this tank. We can get a drip line like this one, or we could get an actual applicator that is going to provide slurry directly into the ground. And this is basically a little bit of a disc cultivator. And in addition to cultivating the soil, it's actually also applying slurry directly into the soil as it is working the ground. So depending on which way you want to do it, 
it's all going to work out the same in the end. But with respect to your pigs, well, you can use slurry or manure, either at the BGA or on your fields as fertilization. And then again, if your pigs, main form of income from your pigs is going to be via reproduction. These guys are going to reach sexual maturity at six months of age. And then four months later, they are going to reproduce one for one. And then every four months after that, your adult pigs will reproduce again one for one. As you get more and more pigs of adult age, well, you're going to get more and more reproduction. So it's going to become quite the cycle in keeping up with keeping your capacity so that when you do have reproduction, you don't miss out on any pigs because you didn't have any space for them. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. And if you did, please go ahead and click that like button. Share this video with anybody that you know that may be interested in keeping pigs in Farming Simulator 25. Now, I know a lot of people will give pigs a little bit of grief and say that they're not worth it. But I think they very much are if you already are set up with respect to being able to harvest those crops. Be that corn, wheat, or barley for your cereal. Canola, soybean, or sunflowers for your protein and then potato or sugar beet for your root crop. You could possibly do a contract and maybe try to keep a little bit of that extra for your pigs. And that's how I used to do my root crops. Or if you're on multiplayer, maybe you can talk someone into helping you do a little bit of a root crop harvest in order to get just enough pigs or just enough potatoes or sugar beets for your pigs. Because again, a little is gonna go a very, very long way because they only are gonna consume 5% of their daily food is going to be from potatoes or sugar beet. Until next time, happy farming.